Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Apocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. And Terrence. What's up? All right, guys. We are back. There is actually plenty to talk about this week, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, checked out this week. Uh, I had a chance, and Terrence, I know you've seen it as well. Uh, Love Lies Bleeding. Uh, this is the A24 film starring uh, Kristen Stewart, uh, Katie O'Brien, and uh, Ed Harris. Um I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, no pants required. Um, no, in all <laughs> seriousness. Uh, no, I thought this was dope. It's a very, um, very decent, not decent, but a very good throwback to sort of like violent, uh, violent thrillers of the 80s. Um, it takes place in the 80s in some sort of like, I don't know where the fuck America, a place I don't ever want to be. Um <laughs> And it's it's good. It's basically about the this um, this woman who works. Um, she kind of works at a gym, and she meets this other woman who's a female bodybuilder. Um, and the uh, Katie O'Brien plays the female bodybuilder, and she kind of has these aspirations to like go to Vegas and do it this bodybuilding show. But she stops off in this little town, um, and she ends up. Katie O'Brien's character ends up working at a shooting range, which just happens to be um, run by uh, Kristen Stewart, the woman who works at the gym, her father, and her and her father are estranged for very good reasons, uh, to say the least. (laughs) And then shit just goes left as sort of Katie O'Brien's character is kind of pulled into this world um, unbeknownst to her, and it just kind of devolves from there. So I really enjoyed it. The one takeaway I would say is James Gunn, this is your Wonder Woman. Katie O'Brien is an obvious fucking choice. She is. She's an obvious choice. She can act. She's got the fucking, she's got the look. She's got the physicality to do it. A much better choice than uh, uh, fucking uh, the last lady, um, Gal Gadot. So, like, yeah, she's if, also, like, she's also a legit bodybuilder in real life, and she's a martial artist. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> she looked like a fucking badass in this movie. Yo. She was not. She's yeah. not fucking around. Also, the sound work in this movie is actually should get a lot of credit. It's gross. <laughs> like, it, yeah, I was, I was about to say it kind of it was disgusting at times. I'm like, yeah, yeah. but it, yeah. like that's kind of the point. Like, it's very visceral because I was watching it with headphones on. I was like, <laughs> like, all right, relax. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. Um, if you like violent like movies from the '80s, I, I don't see why you wouldn't like it. Uh, would you? Yeah, like? I enjoyed it. No, I liked it. I basically echo everything you said. I enjoyed it. That ending was out of control. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, it was a, little bit, it was um, a bit wild. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a good movie. I recommend it. Yeah, yeah definitely. If for nothing else, Katie O'Brien um, in her panty drawers. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's not bad to look at. <laughs> it's not bad to look at. It's good. Like, you should check it out, Micah. It's definitely, you, you'd enjoy it. You'd enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to watch it. Uh, I'm going to watch it tomorrow. Uh, after the movie that we are obligated to watch. No. <laughs> yeah. Be- bef- before you get to Abigail, there's a movie that I checked out yesterday. It's a it's a it's a Spanish horror movie. I don't I don't recommend it to either one of you. But, <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> it's like, but it's called the uh, the coffee table. Um, I'm good. <laughs> it's. It's not the most fucked up thing that I've ever seen. Like I've seen Martyrs several times. I'm out, I'm a little bit sick. Have, you you know what Martyrs is, don't you, Micah? Yeah, so you are. So yep, I've seen that a couple. <laughs> times. Um, this wasn't quite as bad, but the synopsis for this movie is a a, um, a couple buys a uh, a coffee table, and then shenanigans ensue. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all like I don't want to tell anybody anybody that decides to watch this like we have listeners that like horror movies I don't even know if it's, if it's considered a horror um, they consider it a dark a black comedy slash horror I'm like wasn't well, nothing funny about this movie at all I don't <laughs> okay. know what the hell they was talking about but um yeah it's it's kind of wild I would call it like tension the movie because it's incredibly uncomfortable uh, I don't need I, I don't need that. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad I, I for your heart. It's, it's like really uncomfortable. Movie. Yeah, it's good though. It's very good. This is again the Spanish. You got to you got to watch it in the, with subtitles. Um, but anybody out there that enjoys horror movies, check it out if you can find it. Okay. Oh my uh, gosh, stressed out and reading. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> two, two of my least favorite things. Um, all right, uh, Micah, you watched Abigail? Yeah, I like I like fun horror movies. Uh, <laughs> this is a fun this is a fun horror movie. It's um I don't think it's better. It's it's done by two of the members of the collective known as Radio Silence. Um, they they did those uh, they did Ready or Not, which is uh, in my opinion better than this. It's a really really good movie. Like yeah, I love that movie. <clears throat> and um and those two latest Scream movies, which I liked them. But you know, yeah, I like the. I think five was better. Than, what is it? Five six was way better. Yeah, five than was six. better than six. Six was you know was running around uh, with Tim's in New York or some shit. I'm like, <laughs> right? <laughs> wait, wait. All right, you know what? We don't no, he didn't. I'm, no, we don't I'm exaggerating. I mean, he kind of. I mean, he kind of around in combat. I mean, he kind of did though. <laughs> he he did. A little weird. Uh, so I, I, I do like the. I do like the idea of a dude in a scream uh, costume with Tim's on. <laughs> like that's just <laughs> silly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't hate those movies. And, um, but, uh, Abigail is not as good as ready or not, but it's better than, uh, those scream movies. It's more ready or not than it is scream. So it's about, um, these people who have to, who, uh, get commissioned to do a job. They're all like criminals with different backgrounds, right? Like, like Melissa Barrera, uh, is like, a, a former like medic who turned into a junkie. And um, they got this one guy who was an undercover cop who was just like, yo, this criminal lifestyle is the shit. I think I'm going to do that instead of this cop stuff, right? And then they got one guy who looks suspiciously like Elon Musk. Like, it's mm. it's very odd. His name is I remember Kevin the trailer. Yeah, so <laughs> like, Elon Musk? Yeah, that dude, that dude looks exactly murdered? like him. You get murdered uh, in the movie? A lot of people get murdered. A Excellent. lot of people get Excellent. murdered. Excellent. Maybe movie. I'll see it just for that scene. <laughs> um, a lot of people get uh, get murdered. And um, they get commissioned to, uh, you know, they don't know each other. They get commissioned to kidnap a little girl. They And, and there's like, hey, now all you got to do is take it to this, this safe house and wait until morning. Just don't. You know, just just make sure she's there. The buyer's gonna come. They're gonna we're gonna get you fifty million dollars. All you gotta do is babysit this girl, right? And then it turns out like all these people are locked in a room, and um, and Abigail is a fucking ballerina vampire, and she uh she goes on a, a bit of a killing spree, and that's that's the movie, yo. Like that, you know, it, what you see is what you get, right? Like. A bunch of really, really gory, like like gory to the point of silly, right? Like <laughs> like like old school like Mortal Kombat, I'ma uppercut you and then you're gonna blow up, right? And like <laughs> four femurs and three rib cages are gonna come out, right? Like, like so it's super many, silly. So many so many bones. So many bones. <laughs> yeah. It's it's super silly, right? Uh, like I forget how many is like two hundred some odd bones in the body, but like they're all femurs and rib cages. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Mortal Kombat really gave no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's super fun. Um, I wish I had seen this in a theater with a bunch of like minded people. Like it's one of those type of movies, mm, you know, real okay. crowd pleasing type of movie. Uh, if you like your know, fun horror movies, it's worth checking out. All right. Yeah. It looked. I thought the trailer looked pretty fun. So, all right, that's cool. Um, next up, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yeah, I gave my wife uh, three options. I said, "Hey, we can watch the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. We can watch Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, or we can watch Love Lies Bleeding." Right? Like she uh, chose Ghostbusters. We, no, she did not choose Ghostbusters. Oh, she well, chose well. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which is okay. what. Uh, which, uh, cause she, you know, I told her it was from the guy that did the gentleman and, um, oh, all right. yeah, and, uh, and the man from uncle and she really likes the man from uncle. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is kind of like that, you know, it's guy Richie. So I prefer, I prefer like action, you know, criminal, uh, uh guy Richie, but this, but stuff like this is a close second. It's a fun movie it's a it's a not a revisionist history 
right? Isn't like revisionist history like what Inglorious Bastards was, where like they killed Hitler in a theater or some shit? Yeah, just make shit, yeah. make shit up. Right. This is this this apparently is you know following the events of Operation Postmaster, but like heavily dramatized, right? Like yeah. like Alan Richards, Alan Richardson, Richson, whatever the hell his name is. I think uh, a Danish I, fella. Which was very. Yeah. I, I saw it. I watched it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's yeah. not? Who's not gigantic? <laughs> incidentally, right? Like he don't like have no everybody. kind of accent in that movie. I, because I, I, I turned it on for a little bit, and I was like, oh, I just wanted to see a scene with him. I was like, that guy, like that's an American accent. <laughs> like, he's like it was going in and out. It was going in and it out. Was, it was, it was, like, it was, it was walking, it was walking in and out like a child running through in and out the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> just like, oh, hey, we're just a Danish vessel, right? Like, and then where the arrow is at? Let me just. <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, what are you doing? Okay. Jesus. Well, you Christ. ain't here for that. You ain't here for accents. You're here for me stabbing people to death. That's fair. Right. Right. 100. The guy that uh, the guy that Henry Henry Cavill is playing, right? Like. This dude, I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't in his lifetime fathom what a what a handsome man would look like to play him in a movie, let alone Henry Cavill. Right? Like, if you look at this dude, he's <laughs> yes. got these. He's got these gigantic ears. He's got this weird, like he looks like the dude from the thing that we're about to talk about next. He looks like Richard Gadd. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine on, Richard uh, Gadd casting Henry Cavill in that show. Like that's that's the disparity that we're working with here. Um, look, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun action, a lot of fun yeah. characters. Um, I really enjoy. They were it. having a blast yeah. watching. They, they were having a, a ball playing in this movie. All of them yeah. were. Um, yeah. you, you know, uh, this was like the. The catalyst for fucking they said for James Bond and Fleming was in the movie. Yeah, so, Ian Fleming. Yeah, Ian Fleming, Fleming is mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. playing, and he and this Fun. guy, this guy is the is one of the inspirations for right. James Bond, uh, which Gus, is dope, right? No, which was it him or somebody else? Gus Marsh Phillips, the guy that Henry Cavill. Okay. okay. And this is the closest certainly that Henry Cavill uh, is going to come to playing James Bond. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, it looks really fun. I'm going to have a chance to sit down and watch that this week. But um, yeah, I, I did I did sort of fast forward through it. And I, was, I just wanted to see a scene with uh, Alan Richardson uh, fighting and he was stabbing people to death. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, this is, this, this is what I wanted. This is all I wanted. It's like he's got one knife versus like five dudes and everyone's dying except for him. Great. He's got dude more knife, nigga. He, this nigga got one arrow and is just <laughs> fucking taking people out at close range. What the fuck? Get with arrows and 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 yanking the arrows out <clears throat> and reusing it, right? Like, all right, bro. Like, <laughs> I get, get it. it. You don't want to be. You don't want to be in. You don't want to be in a superhero movie, but you want to play Batman. I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, it sounds like he's ready for a Green Arrow movie. That's what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it looked fun. It looked fun. I, I'm I'm excited to see that one. Um, and we've all, have, Micah. Did you finish Baby Reindeer yet? Yes, I finished it. Okay, I have not finished it. I'm on episode five. Um, <laughs> that might, or that's episode the episode four. Episode four. Excuse me. Episode five was the episode where my wife was just like she was so annoyed with <laughs> every character that she just she just finished it because I wanted to finish it. She was just like, I was like, did you like it? She was like, yeah, I guess. They just really got on my nerves, right? Because my wife is not a very, she's empathetic, but like, like, just don't do this. Just don't do it. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, for the first three episodes, well, the entire series. I'm like, the first three episodes, yeah. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? The, <laughs> and then episode oh, four, yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, oh, that's I, I've I've seen <laughs> one through four. I've seen episodes one through four. I can't imagine putting myself in any situation that compromises how episode four ended. I'd be like, and we're done. <laughs> there's no there's no conversation we're having after this. This is horrendous. Um, look, I don't. Uh, Terrence, you made a point about this uh, previously that you should go into this series knowing absolutely nothing. And yeah. 
I, I agree. So we're not going to spoil anything. I would just say that the way this is handled from a production standpoint, and I messaged the two of you guys about this, I think you're going to see a lot of sort of documentary or docu-series done very much in this style. Like, my guess is they're going to ape this. Um, Netflix especially is like, oh, this was a success? Fucking let's do a million of them. Um, which is fine because it feels like watching – like it feels like listening to a podcast in a way, like the, the, way, it's, the way it's shot, at least in my opinion. Um, I think the, the actors, the two principal actors are fucking great. Um, <laughs> Nigga, you have no uh, – You have I, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. I mean, get this get this woman a fucking Emmy straight away. Really? Is that is that accurate? I, this is what I yeah. told you. Like, I'm like, yeah, this woman is doing an interview, and it's scary. Um, she's great. It's, it's like really she's really nuts. really good, man. Yeah, she's um, she she does a very very good job of being like weird and menacing and off putting all at the same time. And I do see the I mean there's there's an obvious reason why. I won't I won't go into it. But there's an obvious reason why you slightly feel bad for that character in the beginning. And then it quickly devol- devolves into I need you to get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> like right away. But you um, feel bad for for the first like twenty minutes of the first episode. Yeah, I'm like, yeah no you do. The fuck you out do. Here. No. <laughs> and then after a while you're like You're like, nah, this is this is enough. Fuck off. I gotta go. Um, please, please stop see? coming here. Please stop coming God here. God damn it! You did, you haven't gotten this episode six yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, Micah knows exactly. What I, mean. <laughs> I, I look. I felt. I felt incredibly sad for that other woman in this series. I was like, oh yeah, his girlfriend. Yeah, I was like, come on. Yeah. Like it, at every turn, by the way. Like at every turn. Like, he wasn't doing things that I thought were very cool, like the subway scene where he just, like, steps off. I was just like, yo, that's fucked up. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Living your truth. Now, this is, honestly, this is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, it's super uncomfortable. Like, it's very uncomfortable. I'm like, Jesus Christ. We were riveted. It's good, though. It's fucking, it's excellent. If If it wins anything, it deserves it, especially from, what's her name? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, so that's all. That's all we'll say. I will one hundred percent finish that um, this week. But yeah, my See, wife and I, we watched. We were like, "You want to watch another episode?" I'm like, "Fuck hell yeah!" I was just like, "Fucking, let's get going." <laughs> you see that Piers Morgan interview? I saw clips of it. That's Terrence. the one you were telling me about, Terrence. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I watched. The whole, I watched the whole thing. That woman's a psycho. Yeah. She's got psychological yeah. issues, like for real. She keeps yeah. saying they they made shit up. <laughs> but then she did just they? like proved that they did the way she was right, yo, right. There was well, a, I'm, she, gonna, she, I'm gonna sue. Nah, yo, you ain't got no lawyer. No lawyer would tell you. I'm, I'm a lawyer. Here's more. No, you're not. not she, she, yeah, she, she, she's like, I have lawyer friends. I have four phones that I use. I was like, okay, you're really not making a good case for yourself, woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? I'm totally she normal. Said, she's like, I didn't see the show. Um, but I believe the actress is like she said. Well, one thing she says in the beginning of the of the of the uh, interview is she's like, he asked her how old is she. She's like, I'm 58. I'm one year younger than you are. I'm like, how the fuck do you know how old this nigga is? What's wrong with you? It's almost like she fucking looked him up to see how old yeah. Pierce Morgan was. I'm like, okay, Pierce, you, should, <laughs> you might be in trouble, <laughs> my nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because like she said that like real easy. And she's like, I didn't see the show, but like, uh, they got a woman that looks just like me. I'm like, how do you know that if you haven't watched anything? Right. How do you know how old? The, how do you know how old this woman is if you haven't watched it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, what are you? All right. Like, what's wrong? Get is... the fuck away. <laughs> like, for real. She's she's got problems. She really has problems, and I don't think she says she's suing, but I really doubt she's going to win. The only thing they have is at the well. I can't even say anything. Never mind, because that would be spoiling. I don't know how. I don't know how they can. I don't know how she has a case. I really don't. She, yeah, I mean, I'd be yeah. shocked. Yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the legal system is over 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 <laughs> there. But if she's able to sue for anything, that legal system needs a rehaul, uh, an overhaul. Because like, we just telling the, we just telling your story. It's not our fault. You're fucking insane. <laughs> like it's just not our like, fault. Like I only like, sent I just, eighteen tweets. Eighteen. <laughs> like, uh, like all you right, sent one. You sent one voicemail. Okay. I don't all right. You. 
<laughs> All right. I mean, you know, that's a pretty big disparity. But one digit <laughs> from five digits, that's a pretty big disparity, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's like, but it's like one big one. It's like, it's, she's, she's not counting the 5,000. This is a one big one. That's it. <laughs> she's super crazy. Um, but yeah, baby reindeer. Look, every every number of months, about every three to three to six months, Netflix gets a really good documentary or documentary series, and you're like, and that's and it and it hits, and everybody's like, holy shit, this is crazy. This is theirs. Like, I don't know when the next one's coming, but yeah, and then the rest of it is trash. The rest, the rest of it's of trash, it's right? Like, this is what they should just do. Heist, whatever, fuck that stupid yeah. ass movie was. Right, they should they should be <clears throat> investing in stuff like this because to me these things hit a lot better than those sort of um, vanity projects that they fund with The Rock and uh, you know um, Kevin Hart. Jennifer Lopez. Uh, so Red are, no, sir. Atlas looks awesome. It's gonna be. <laughs> What's the movie that The Rock was late on constantly? Isn't that a Netflix movie? Yeah. Yeah, Red One. Yeah, Red that's One. Red One. Movie, right? Yo, a two hundred million dollar movie. Yo, that's mm. on Netflix. Okay. Again, they just be throwing money at shit. Yeah, that's crazy. and it's a Christmas movie, yo. What the fuck? Like, nah, yo, you don't you don't sink that kind of money in holiday pictures. What no. the fuck? Uh, look, it's it's a spoiler. It's not going to be great. It's just not going to no. be great. Red um, One is also just terrible. Oh, uh, Red Notice was awful. It was just <laughs> predictable as all get out. Um, all right, let's take a quick break and come right back and get into topics. All right, uh, topics. Micah, take it away. Alex Cross is uh, happening. Oh, no. Sorry. It's a long story. <laughs> Tomb Raider. That, that, that fucking Google Drive shit didn't refresh at all for you. <laughs> Tomb Raider is happening from uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Uh, it's going to be a series on Amazon. And um, I'm here for it because I really like uh, old Fleabag over there. Um, <laughs> the news was revealed by head of Amazon and MGM Studios, Jen Salk, uh, at the company's upfront event in New York City. Who called it an epic and globe trotting series? If I could tell my teenage self this was happening, I think she'd explode. Tomb Raider has been a huge part of my life, and I feel incredibly privileged to bring it to television with such passionate collaborators. I hate corpo speak. Yes. Um, Lara Croft means a lot to me, as she does to many, and I can't wait to go on this adventure, bats and all, uh, says Waller Bridge. Um, okay, look, uh, I like Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I think she's really funny. I think she's very talented. Um, and I'm, and, uh, it's Tomb Raider, right? Like I saw some people, uh, confusing the story, um, or not reading the story, uh, or really all the words in the headlines, uh, and they thought that Phoebe Waller Bridge was going to play Lara Croft. That's a that's a wild choice. <laughs> uh, which you know, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, hey, you know what? I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it. Give uh, give Laura some give Laura some personality. That's fine. What do you uh, What do you think of this? Are you fans of Phoebe Waller Bridge? Uh, yes. Look. Yeah, I am. I mean, she feels like she'd be too old, but then again, as I look at this image, like, maybe not. Um, but I, it, she just would not be the, the choice I would go with. Um, why is that? I just, I don't know. Like, she doesn't seem like a physical really? actress. She doesn't seem like a, the, the physical type of person that you would want Lauren Croft to be? No, she doesn't. She doesn't have triangle tits. I think that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. No, um, no, I think she's I think she's a very good choice as far as um adapting this, as far as being like a writer producer for this. Hell yeah. Like I think she's she's cle- she's a very clever um she's a very clever writer. So um she, was she in uh, a new Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones, her? yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, I was her in Indiana oh. Jones. You can I mean, see it. Right? I could see it. I could see it after seeing yeah. that. But uh, after seeing that, you can see it. 
I have not seen that movie. Um, oh man, you are not missing out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I'm not rushing to it. Um, frankly, I've not seen movie the last had time two. travel in it, guys. That movie had time <laughs> travel in. It. What? <laughs> that's what the that's what the <laughs> dial of destiny was. Uh, he's told you that before. He's not kidding. And now, like, and now I'm mad again because I did not remember. <laughs> Someone time no, traveled to the past, erased my memory, and then I came back. <laughs> it's a bad thing. That's stupid. That's I was like, okay. This is so covering. did they just they just got away from the sort of religious the religious aspect of it, right? With the aliens in the last one, and now time travel in this one. He so oh, the uh, you know spoiler alert I guess for a bad movie they um, the time travel the villains are Nazis and. Uh, What's his name? Mads Mikkelsen is is like yeah. the he's like I want to find this time machine so that I can go back in time, kill Hitler myself, and then I can rule all the Nazis because I know what I'm doing. Hitler's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I know what I'm doing as like King Snake Nazi or whatever, right? Like that's a, that's a wild plot choice. <laughs> But but they but they fucked up the time travel, right? Like and then they, they go too far back. Into like a like, thousand uh, years back. Right. <laughs> right. Like, <what>? Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, and then right. Indiana Jones is like, I wanna stay here. Right. I want I don't wanna leave. I don't wanna a leave. A thousand here. years into the past? <laughs> yeah. It's a little weird. Nigga, you won't have running water, bro. <laughs> like, no. Okay. I guess. Can we go to like, they think you're, they they think like your I airplane is, They yeah. think your airplane is a dragon, yo. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, all right. That's fucking dumb. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think that this is a good idea. Um, I like the idea of this being a series. I think I think overall, video games being adapted as series is a, is a much better um, uh, move. I think, I think it just... That's been proven time and time again, right? Um, so yeah, okay. That's this is fine. I, this is good news. I saw this this morning. I was pretty happy about it. I think this Jen Salky or whatever I ever say her name is lying. She said that Tomb Raider has been a huge part of her life. No, Tomb Raider. She was she was thirty years old when Tomb Raider came out. <laughs> I had to look up her age. I'm like, how old were you when Tomb Raider? Nah, yo. Tomb Raider came out in, Tomb Raider came out in '96, if I'm not mistaken. Now, uh, now, maybe yeah. she means Tomb Raider has been a big part of her life as far as the movies, which were not good at all. I disagree. I think she's lying. <laughs> like, that's what I Yeah, think. I, think, I think she's just doing real regular ass, like, run of the yeah. corporal Maybe speak. she was a huge Tomb Raider fan at 32 years old. Um, <laughs> maybe she's a huge gamer. I don't know. Maybe she loves video games. But, you know, yeah, she maybe. said she told her, you know, maybe. she said, uh, if I told my teenage self this was happening, I think that's why I was like, How old were you when this shit came out? Did you're ahead of Amazon. I mean, if you're in your early 40s, that's fine, but okay. I don't know. Anyway, I think she's lying, but I, I can't wait to see what this looks like because, again, Amazon has been on a fucking tear lately. Um, Fallout was great. It's another video game property. Hopefully, this one will be just as good. I looked. And then they're doing uh, God of War, right? Yeah, yeah. that's under them. <clears throat> I hope it's as good as the 2018 film Tomb Invader, which apparently is on Tubi right now. So, I don't know. It's probably that good. No, I think this is a good choice. This this probably will turn out pretty good. So I'll just be interested to see who they actually cast as Laura Croft. So maybe it, maybe it will be Phoebe Waller Bridge. I don't know. I can't fundamentally. Um, I think them. they'd probably go a little. I think you're right. I think they'd probably go a little younger. Um, <laughs> The woman who played her in the 2018, or not, not 2018, but was it, maybe it was 2018, 2019 Tomb Raider movie. Like, she was pretty good. It was just a bad movie. Like, that just, that that wasn't her fault. Like, that that movie was just fucking trash. Um, So, uh, Tomb Raider. Vin Vin Cater. The woman's name is Alabama Channing in Tomb Invader? Okay. Sir, that's just her name. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Alabama Channing. Like Indiana, you know. Because. Oh, my God. Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. 
Oh, Lord. All right. And she's an archaeologist, just like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looks wow. like Laura. Wow. <laughs> Why are you hating on this woman? She's very good at this. Wow. Wow. 2.7 on IMDb. Like, that is. That is. Uh, some people on IMDb, they love everything. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I bet it was a good Alabama movie. Channing. <laughs> Sounds like an old school wrestling name, right? Like that's her. Yeah. Oh my God, it's Alabama! <laughs> I didn't hit you with the Alabama slammer. Like, yeah. all, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. The boys has been picked up for a fifth season <laughs> at Amazon. Uh, season four of the raunchy superhero show will debut on June thirteenth, and the boys season four will launch with its first three of eight total episodes rolling out the remaining installments on a weekly basis finale to stream on July 18th. Um, okay. I mean, we know everything else that this article says. Um, how many more, more seasons? the boys, how many more seasons do you think? Uh, I think you were right last, last time. I think five should be it because like, unless you've got something to say, um, that half the country won't understand. Um, <laughs> they have brain worms. Yeah. And I can't, I can't imagine that there would be, I mean, they're going to dive into politics this year directly, right? Like Quite politics that, that, uh, you know, there's politics in many things, but people don't understand that. So I guess they're like, okay, well, we're going to talk about politics in the most base way possible. Base in like not that newfangled way that people made up the word base, but like well, like bottom based. level. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm old. I don't know shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to we're gonna talk directly <laughs> about politics. And, and <clears throat> all right fine uh let's go let's do it let's right, look let's let's have homelander literally shoot someone on fifth avenue and see if they get it <laughs> let's have them do that they while didn't drinking breast milk from a baby bottle and let's see if they get it that he's a fucking man child and he's not to be fucking oh, all right. with all right. his with his all right. beautiful golden hair um yeah, look, I think uh, it was funny. Cam and I were talking about this um, back and forth because he was thinking like I like one. We were both wondering like how many seasons do they have? Like clearly, the end goal here is to kill Homelander, right? Like the the comic, the original comic, they kill Homelander, but it keeps going, and it is the world's dumbest fucking ending on a great book. Like Butcher becomes the villain. And it's just, like it just devolves into this really weird uh, situation. Um, I say, like, make some, you know, make season five, do a movie. That's where you kill him, and end it there. Like, like you get five five seasons in a movie, or six seasons, and the sixth season is it. Like that. That's it. There doesn't need to be more than that. And look, frankly, if it's the end of five seasons, I'm fine with that. Like. <laughs> Go out on a high note, but if you kill Homelander, that has to be the end of the series. Don't unless they have something wildly new to do. But he's such a great villain. I don't know how anybody fills his um, fills his shoes after he's gone. It, it would just make no sense. So, and I, I can't imagine. Want, him I would not. Butcher. I would not want this to be a movie. Like, just uh, be NC seven. Just do five seasons and then that's it. Five seasons. Five is a really good number for something like this mm -hmm. because like you've already got – you already have a spinoff, which is, you know, technically a season. Like it's still in this universe. I, I, I don't want the show to overstay its welcome, right? Because yeah. like if there's one thing that people <laughs> love to do, they love to, 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 to hate something that they've seen too much of. Right. Yeah. Like this shouldn't be what the MCU is now. Right. <laughs> Where yeah. people are, people just fucking hate it. And, and 
the and the quality is is dipping and all that like they're putting goats in there for the win you know what i mean like the second you put goats in your movie in your in your universe for laughs like you you it's a problem. you you're done you're done you need to you need to take a break and kind of readjust <laughs> I cannot believe that so five seasons that's it yeah i think i think it's somewhere around that i think is is the proper ending but i i do think the most important part is once you kill Homelander, that has to be it. Just back out of it and be done with it. Don't, because that's where the comic fucked up. They killed Homelander and it was a big deal. And they were like, let's keep going. And it was like, please stop. Because he's a great <coughs> antagonist. But then you, you got you to gotta be able to, you know, it's like George Costanza. You got to be able to be like, you know what? Nailed it. I'm out. You just, like, leave on a high <laughs> note. Like, don't just stick around. So we'll see. Um, Micah, how excited are you for this next story? Uh, Academy Award winning actor <laughs> Nicolas Cage is once again reprising his role as Spider-Man Noir, but this time in a live action series. Um, Cage is set to star in the live action show Noir, uh, which has been ordered at uh, MGM Amazon. Series will debut domestically on MGM Plus's linear channel, followed by a global launch on Prime. Um, look, I'm gonna watch it. Um, I I hope. See, here's the thing, though, right? Like, I don't know what to expect. I guess I should expect, uh, you know, something silly. I kind of don't want something silly, though. I kind of want like the like the silliest thing I want is for there to be a colored Rubik's cube that he's just fascinated by, right? But I kind of want it to be uh, a little more serious, right? It's called noir for fuck's sakes, right? So, uh, but and and you know, he played that character kind of for laughs, yeah, in um, in in those movies, so. I kind of wanted to be serious, um, but you know what do I know? I, I'm not an Academy Award winning actor. Uh, Nicholas Cage is, and uh, look, if you're not interested in this, like just turn the podcast off, yo, because you don't know what you you don't know you don't know anything. You don't know anything. <laughs> you're, you're not interesting. You're not interesting enough to listen to this. If this whether you like Nicholas Cage. Uh, legitimately like I do, or ironically like most people do, or whether or not you don't like him. Yo, you got you got to be interested in this, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Terrence don't know nothing about fucking Spider-Man. Are you interested I, in this? Just because it's Nicolas Cage. Does Spider-Man exactly. have any power? Exactly. Yes, he does. He does um, have power. I thought he just yeah, kept the old Why does he have yeah. a gun? Like, like well, a Dillinger. <laughs> I mean, he's got. I mean, look, look uh, it's the thirties, yo. Yeah. He's got whatever <laughs> gun. Yeah. He's got whatever gun Jack Napier killed from Bruce Wayne's parents <laughs> with. Uh, so right. I want him to have that gun. I don't want him to have the gun that he shot the bat plane with. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like that's. That's the seriousness I want. I don't, I, you know, oh. I want Jack Napier. I don't want, uh, you know, the Joker. Right. I don't, I don't need all that, but yeah, I, this is, this, this whole thing is inherently interesting to me. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see what they do with, with this. I hope he plays the character like he, I mean, I, I, I would I want it to be somewhere between uh, for laughs and serious, but the way he played the character, as far as like the sort of like done in that sort of noir detective thing, where he's kind of speaking in this like really he's monologue, way. Like yeah, he's narrating. I want that. I want that constantly. Yes. <laughs> I want it constantly because I think yes, that would actually I, be I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I want I want that. And when I say serious, I mean I don't want like. <sighs> You know, I want him. I don't want. I don't want it to turn into um, the Naked Gun. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right I don't right. want it. That would be ridiculous. I don't want it too goofy, right? Like I'm not saying I want some fucking. 
I'm not saying I want some like hard nosed like detective story where he turns into a blue alien at the end, right? <laughs> I like, knew no, it was coming. <laughs> I want, I want, I want something. I want something that's like him monologuing, but like there's a murder. You know what I mean? And he's got to yeah. solve. He's got to solve a case for a dame. You know what I mean? And and yeah, that's. If you Look, if you pulled it if you pulled it like Sin City did, like that would be kind of fun, right? Like that level of seriousness, but like the ridiculous, the inherent ridiculousness of Nicolas Cage just being in anything, then then I'm fine. Like that would be a good balance for me. Yeah, yeah, something a little less serious than Sin City is what I want. That that would be perfect. But you know what? No matter what it is, Academy Award winning actor Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Is going to provide us something. Uh, at least his performance uh, will be memorable. Oh, 100%. 100%. I want it all to be like in in black, white, and sepia. Like just combinations of, of those colors too. I don't and want I, this shit to be in color. It's got to be frankly, in black and white at least. Right? Yeah, f- frankly, I don't want it to be in anything but black and white. I think that would be really dope. Like it would be unique and kind of fun. Yeah, let, let him and like, look, do I love you. fun I, and, and different. I love you, Nick Cage. Yo, keep that mask on, bro. Keep keep the mask on as, as much as you can. Does he have like a secret identity? Just uh, old, yeah. Old white man who will do any movies for money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, all right. Nicolas Cage uh, feeling the call of the wild. Uh, and playing Spider-Man Noir in a live-action series. Um, a new cast member joins the Fantastic Four, uh, and his name is John Malkovich. Um, no word yet on uh, who he, who his character is. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm on a lot of, uh, I'm on a lot of like Doom message boards. Uh, or groups, I guess they're called now. You're a fan. I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I I said you do. don't know. <laughs> we all talk about doom and, all the time. Like, yeah, all right, and the uh, and the scuttlebutt that people are trying to put out there no. is that John Malkovich. Is playing Doctor Doom. Now That's, look, that is not me saying that because I feel like that is the <laughs> stupidest fucking idea I've ever fucking heard. I, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. That voice, his, nah, Richard, yo, like nah, yo, I can't, I can't, I can't see it. I cannot see it. I can't hear it. No. Not at all. No, I, I don't see that at all. That's very silly. I think that he's voicing Herbie the robot. That's what I think. He's got a funny. He's got a funny voice. It, it, you know, like it's a bit of a weird voice. He's a bit of a weirdo guy. Like it kind of works. I think he would have a lot of fun with it. He doesn't even have to go to the fucking studio. He can phone that shit in and do other movies that he wants to do, and come in and do twenty minutes worth of work and be done. Yeah, people were like, "Oh, but he was Cyrus the Virus." No, yo, no. First of all, Con Air came out thirty fucking years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a million years ago. <laughs> like, 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 come on, yo. Like, nah, man. Uh, and, and 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 second of all, like, nah. I just the voice, the voice don't work. It just doesn't. It mm. doesn't work. Not at all. Um, yeah, I have no idea who John Malkovich could play, but I like John Malkovich. Yeah, um, he's a great actor, actually. This is a very, and this is a very, uh, this is a very interesting cast. Um, to that effect, um, Ralph Innocent has been cast as Galactus in the Fantastic Four. For all you gamers out there, uh, he was uh, in Diablo Four uh, as that first main dude that you meet, the dude with the super deep voice, and uh, he was that cool guy. In uh, Final Fantasy 16, um, your 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 kind of main male partner that you know was in the first act, and um, he's got a great voice. 
And uh, from what I can tell, from what I can tell, he's a really good actor. Uh, Galactus seems kind of, you know, strong for a first outing, but, um, you know, if, if you've got, uh, if you've got a silver surfer there, it, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense to have Galactus somewhere. Um, so as look, I don't know how they're going to do Galactus, but if you're going to do Galactus, in my opinion, I mean, why not try the classic Galactus, right? Like we've seen him as a cloud, no. right? Didn't quite work. I remember the ultimate universe uh, in the books. They they tried to, Galactus was like a a hive mind of machines called Galactus. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're overthinking the giant fucking alien man with the with the big purple helmet that looks like a fucking a jug of Kool Aid and shit. Like it just it's it's sometimes you got to embrace the goofiness of it. You got to embrace the goofiness of this of this stuff, right? Like the the giant purple man with the big purple helmet was too was ridiculous, but the walking pile of rocks with the New York accent. What is is totally plausible? <laughs> like, come on, yo! Like, yeah, just embrace the silliness, man. right? If you're already in it, just go for it. I agree. And look, so. Galactus has always struck me as a very odd villain to put into a movie because he's kind of a one-trick pony. I'm real big, and I'm gonna eat your planet. Okay, and I'm gonna stop you from eating the planet. All right, I'm gonna leave now. Like that, like. You're not getting into a big physical fight with Galactus. It seems very silly, right? So it's it's like it's like fighting a hurricane. Like, okay, I mean, <laughs> what you gonna do? Punch him? Right. Right. It, how do you how do you fight something? How do they fight Galactus? With the it's ultimate like nullifier. Do you know what the ultimate nullifier is, Terrence? The ultimate nullifier is is a remote control, nigga. And for some reason, Galactus is afraid of that shit. <laughs> That's it. <What? laughs> because there's no other way to beat him, dude. There's no other way. You just got to bullshit your way out of it. Like, it makes no uh, sense. And then, like, in, it depends on <laughs> who's writing the comics, how big Galactus is, right? Some people draw him where he's like grabbing the planet with one hand, and then in other comics, it's like he's on Earth walking around. He's just gigantic. It's like the size of Godzilla. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? like pick so, one. And right? he, so he's, he's like wildly different sizes. So he can grow and no, no. It just and, depends on who's drawing him. Like depends on the story. They're like maybe he's a little bit smaller. Maybe he's a lot bigger. It's just it's very weird. Um, at the end of the day. I don't know how they're going to pull off Galactus. Like, like they did a good job with Ego, right? Like, Ego is a living planet and is literally just like a face on the side of this planet, right? Um, and they decided he was to also, change that. Decided yeah, he's also... Yeah, because he's, he's represented by a, a an actual person on the fucking planet, right? Like... Right. Look, this is why I don't make movies, right? Because I don't know how you do I don't know how you do stuff like this. But uh Look, I'm here for it. Whatever. Whatever. I'm here for it. I'm I, I for am it. I'm happy that they're going with with um this guy instead of all of the, the names that uh had been floated around. Because I think a lot of people were just like ready to pounce on like no, I don't like that or whatever. And everyone's like, Oh, okay, like this guy and then they heard his voice from interviews and it was like all right, yeah, that works, right? So it kind of it knocked down, I think, a lot of sort of prejudgment of it, which I appreciate it. So works for me. I mean, I, I watched a couple of the guys' interviews. He's got the fucking voice. So as what I would imagine a man the size of a large cloud would sound like. So, <laughs> so we'll see. I can't believe they did that. It was the, the, the worst thing. Um, all right, next up. Next up, we will. Oh no, we there is one more story. Uh Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow gets a uh release date. Uh who is this person? Uh she's from uh, House of the Dragon. Oh yeah, that's the young uh the young version of uh 
of uh, Millie Al- Alcock yes. um, as uh, the Girl of Steel. Um, are we supposed to call her Supergirl or are we supposed to call her Superwoman? Or no, are we supposed Super- to call her Super? Supergirl. Supergirl. Superwoman is a different um, character. Yes, what? yes, she's um yes, Superwoman is a different character. With uh what's that evil Superman? It starts with a U. An owl man. Well and uh Yeah, but there's a there's a superwoman on the the regular Earth too. It's uh Lois Lane when she when she's given powers at one point. She goes by Superwoman as well. Who's the one from the crime syndicate? I don't know. I I don't remember her name. Why the fuck am I asking you? You don't, you don't <laughs> read DC comics. Get out of here. <laughs> there was a there's a Superwoman. And a Superwoman. Um, oh yeah, the crime syndicate one is from is Superwoman as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, I know I wasn't going crazy. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. all right. L- L- Lana Lang is the one who becomes Supergirl as well. Anyway, there's fucking there's a million of them. Anyway, Superwoman comes out June twenty sixth, twenty. 26. So, long time know that, guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, the one thing that's important here is that this is the second movie in the DCU. So, they're not, they're not going with, they're not going with, I mean, Superman doesn't come out until 2025. So, um, they're not going with like a bad yearly release. Or yeah. They're not going with like a Batman or anything like that as a second movie. That's, that I find, I find that to be pretty interesting. So, We'll see. That's weird. I mean, if they have, uh, you know, if everything is connected and they they want to do all of this, um, they want to do all of this, you know, universe stuff. Like they they have other DC properties coming out in 2025 to you know keep the DCU in the zeitgeist. It just won't be a movie, right? Um, they have, was it uh, Creature Commandos? Is one of them, I, and I think they have another um, another series as well. So, yeah, you'll get plenty of stuff. Yeah. So, all right, that's fine. Supergirl, Millie Alcock. All right, um, uh, and she was good in House of Dragon. I thought she was very good. Um, yeah, she was. All right, let's take a quick break and come right back. Okay, uh, next up, Mr. and Mrs. Smith renewed for season two, but with a caveat. Um, so there, it did get renewed for a second season at Amazon, obviously. First one was incredibly popular. Um, but Donald Glover and Maya Ersh- Erskine are not expected to return. So I guess there, perhaps this is going to be an anthology series where you get you know a new team um, – Every season, um, which is a shame if that is if that's what it turns out to be, just because I liked um, their chemistry in the first season, uh, and I like to see it continue. I also have this thought that this is this is a work that um, that they're bullshitting because of the way season you know spoiler for um, season one, but the way season one ended, it ended on a like, do they survive or not type of thing, and it'd be kind of interesting if. Like the second season starts with a completely different team and then it kind of goes down the line. It's like, oh, actually, these characters are connected to these other ones and then they switch back into their story. Like, I think that would be kind of fun just because of the nature of the show. It's all clandestine and all this other shit. So it could be a work and they're just trying to push this whole idea of like you don't know if they survived um, until the show comes out. Or it could just be that they're doing an anthology series, which they never said that they were going to uh, initially. So... Maybe they changed their mind. Maybe these guys are too busy. I don't know. Uh, but that, yeah, I didn't know it was going to be season two. I, I, I mean, I figured it was. It was pretty popular season two. season two. Yeah, but you know, Donald Glover's a you know he's like he's a weird guy. Yeah, he don't. You know? Yeah, he seems like uh, <laughs> seems weird, like but. you know. I did that already, <laughs> and now I want to try. Yeah, something I'm going to something else. Maybe I'll I mean, maybe I'll Atlanta. come back to it. I mean, didn't he do Atlanta for like four or five seasons? Yeah, yeah, but, but it wasn't implied that they died at the end of the first season. So <laughs> <laughs> I've never and seen I know Atlanta. You, I don't know that. <laughs> and I, I know what you mean, and but I, I take it as they did not survive. Um, you don't think so? No. Uh, Donald Glover's character was bleeding out. Um, 
um, what's her name? Uh, Erskine's character had one bullet and you heard three bullets. Now, unless uh, Maya Erskine's character, you know, came in, uh, what's her name? Um, the chick with the vampire Pomeranian comes in oh. and uh, that's a blade three reference guys yes. that's a blade trinity reference guys <laughs> <laughs> and she unless she came in shot a shot um missed maya disarmed her yeah. no she would have to come in shoot twice and then maya disarmed her and then shot her with a third shot mm -hmm. uh, but i i mean i guess it could happen Look, I don't all know. I, all I'll say is you thought that Chris Hemsworth was dead at the end of Extinction, and you got a second one. He should have been. First of all, no, it's extraction. No, it's it's extraction. It. Yes, it is extraction. No, yeah. It is yeah, extraction. Extraction. Yes, I know oh, that. Okay. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not arguing right. that. But so, shooting a all, superhero in the neck will not kill them. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Apparently not. Apparently not. It doesn't even need a tracheotomy or anything. It doesn't even doesn't need <laughs> Is a he voice okay? box. I'm okay. All right. <laughs> We're good. Um, there's a third one. And he was drowning. <laughs> yeah, forget, don't forget this nigga was drowning also. So, yeah. the, the chlorine carterizing. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you guys in your details. Fuck off. That's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I hope that – I would hope that it's just – it's a work. But – We'll see. I kind of we'll I'm I'm the opposite. I want there to be a new team. Uh they made a big deal about showing multiple Mr. and Mrs. Smiths in the first season. Sure. And I think it would be uh much more interesting uh to make it a new team with a a, a team with a different dynamic, uh, different personalities to keep things fresh. That's how you keep something like this fresh. You don't sure. want it'll, uh, it's all going to depend on who the team is, who they cast, or whatever. Yeah. If, yeah. if it's a new team, because if it's because they were really good in season one, they if, were. The, if the yeah. season two cast isn't all that interesting, yeah, you got yourself, you got yourselves a <laughs> detective, I believe, is, is the uh, the proper term for that, right? Like, really good first season. Really good first season, and we have not we've not been able to get back there, and that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, this season was fine. Last season was fine. It just again, it got a little crazy. It just turned, it just like you said, Terrence. It turned into Resident Evil, <laughs> right? And, but that's what I'm saying. We just but we've never gotten back to that season one quality. So I don't know. Look, it's not like I'm not going to watch it because I mean he's Glover apparently is uh, recently announced that he's going on a world tour. Um, as Childish Gambino, uh, beginning in He's August. Got an album coming up. Yeah, uh, beginning in August through February of 2025. Maybe they wait. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Um, it's not like Amazon doesn't have plenty of things to put on TV. So um, we'll see. But it, look, if if they're not involved, what I would like to say though is, as long as the people who worked on the show are still involved, then I'll be happy with that. Like. It's got to have that same cool ass vibe that the first one had. I just thought it, I thought that first season was just really dope, just really well done. So we'll see, we shall see. Um, next up, uh, Peter Jackson is returning to the Lord of the Rings franchise with new movies coming in 2026. Um, he's not directing them, um, but he is going to be um, doing script development and um, and producing. Is my guess. Uh, the first film from New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers will be called Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum, uh, which is a working title, uh, with Andy Serkis set to star and direct the film. Now, here's the problem. Uh, Andy Serkis is really, really good as an actor. Uh, I saw Venom, uh, Let There Be Carnage. That's one he directed. He directed that? Yeah, Andy Serkis is really good at acting. I don't know that... <laughs> directing is his is his thing but maybe 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 i don't know maybe he's like really passionate about this and um they could get some really great writers so i don't know i'm not gonna act like i don't like lord of the rings i feel like i don't care now is, is my is my best assessment i know neither one of you guys are particularly uh lord of the rings uh folks at all so I've never watched this one yeah the movies are good <laughs> 
I think they're good. But I, I it just feels like I, I believe. Yeah, no, you don't, but that's fine. Um <laughs> <laughs> you're lying. Um but it it feels like do we need this? I did not like those Hobbit movies. I thought they were fucking terrible. Um so I, I don't know that I'm all that interested, but show me something, make me interested. So we'll see. Uh next up Je- this is an interesting story. Jeff Bridges, uh, Dave Bautista, um, and um, Brian Cranston are going to be in a live-action Grendel movie. Um, for folks who don't know, that's, that's based – I guess it's based on the book uh, that came out a number of years ago. But it's it's a Beowulf story. And Bautista is playing Beowulf. Um, and it's a monster, monster hunter, monster killer movie. Um, is he man- smart? <laughs> Not really. Um, no, he is actually pretty smart. Um, the fact that Dave Batista has managed to put himself where he is in Hollywood is an incredible story in and of itself. Like, look at the two actors he's sitting in between in this image. You know, like that's that's insane. That's insane. Um, dude's career is just it's actually wonderful to watch. I, I have to, I give him all the credit in the world. So. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. I feel like, like the rock is almost a billionaire, right? Yeah. And he'll just do, he'll do whatever the fuck he does. And like most of it is garbage, right? right. <laughs> it looks like Dave Batista is actually going for stuff that actually has substance to it. He wants, I don't to know what a, the hell he wants to be an be. actor. Like well, he wants to, really he wants to be a legit actor, Yeah, which is really weird. He came in. That, he came in WWE with a murderer's row of um, people. Yeah, when they came in, he came in with fucking. What do you? It was him, John Cena, uh, fucking Brock Lesnar. Wow. Uh, who else? Um, Shelton Benjamin. There's like five of them. It all came in the exact same uh, time, and he went on to become like a really popular guy in the WWE. And the fact that, like you said, the fact that he's he is where he is now, like all of them, like John Cena went on to become an actor. He's not. I think honestly, I think he's picking product projects that he's starting to pick worse and worse projects. So he he was in something called Ricky Stenicky on Amazon. Yeah. I was about to, I was about to watch it. I was about to watch it. And, I watched uh, a little bit of it. And I'm like, I can't finish this. This is this is too <laughs> stupid. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> but yeah, Dave Batista is. Dude's an artist. Even when he was in WWE, I, I saw I saw our rivals with him, and he was like, "There were certain things I wanted to do. They wouldn't let me because of the way I looked. So that's why I left." I <laughs> he was so he was, big. Like it's hard getting acting jobs where you have the body of a silverback gorilla. <laughs> it's, a, it's a quote from him, <laughs> which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. And he's, and he's, he's slimmed like, down. Oh. Yeah, he definitely has. He definitely has. Yeah. But like, I'm looking over his. I'm looking over his. Um, his filmography, it's kind of wild, right? Like, of the th- things that we've heard, like, his start really is like the Scorpion King 3. Okay. There's like five or six of those fucking pieces of shit. Um, <laughs> the Man with the Iron Fist, which I think was the first movie I saw him in, which was not good. Then Riddick, right? That's 2013. And it was like, all right. And then immediately 2014 is guardians of the galaxy and his career just takes the fuck off. It's guardians of the galaxy, LA slasher, specter heist. There's a bunch of other bullshit. Um, I didn't like specter. No, it's not very good. Guardians <laughs> of the galaxy Two, blade runner, 2049 infinity war hotel Artemis, which was not a great movie. Um, I didn't hate it. It was, it was, it was, all it right. was, uh, yeah, it was silly. Yeah, very, it was. very silly. <laughs> um, Dune. Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, Dune 1 and 2. Knock at the Cabin, which he led. And I actually didn't think he did a bad job. Yeah, that was good. Movie. That was a yeah. good movie. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was actually fun. Um, it was a weird fucking ending, but sure. Um, <laughs> uh, he did a Miyazaki uh, movie. He was um, in The Boy and the Heron? Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. What the fuck is going on? Over there, right. <laughs> right. Wow! What the hell? Right. Really? So it, it's it's kind of dope to watch. Like he's been in, you know, he's been in a number of like bullshit movies. But for him to get into like 
Blade Runner and um, Dune and stuff like that, that's pretty dope for him. I, I think it's awesome. And look, he doesn't seem to want to slow down and um, do other things. The fact that Denae, uh Villeneuve keeps picking him for his amazing epic work is like, just call Dave. Why? Because <laughs> this this guy is trying, and you know he he's figuring it out. And every role he does in a re, in like these real movies, right? He was in Glass Onion too. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, every role he seems to do better and better every time. And this is what I wanted for The Rock, like to be eventually taken seriously in doing movies like this. Like, yeah, you can still do your like. All right, I'm on my dead legged diehard movie. I get that. Like, go have fun, but like, do some real shit. Like, do some real shit. <laughs> dead legged diehard is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. Wrong. But he's doing. He's doing. He's doing that UFC movie, right? The the, the smasher or the whatever. Yeah, for a twenty four. A twenty four movie. Hopefully, yeah. you know. I hope a twenty four. Hopefully, hopefully, gonna pull something out of his ass. But I think I think if he allows a director to actually direct him and not try to bully the director, I think he could do, well, do quite well. All right, let, let's look and see who's actually behind this movie. Like, if Seven Bucks Productions is anywhere near this movie, trash. Um, uh, it, mm, mm, I don't trust it. Don't trust it. What's the name of it? I don't know. The I thought it was Smasher. Like I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, I'll it's, find uh, it. The head crush. It's something about smashing. Yeah, he's he's of course, he's, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, of course it, it is. I I want him to actually take stuff seriously because it's, it's um the smashing machine <laughs> is the name. Okay, of smashing is. machine. Okay, all right. Look, maybe I don't know if I I don't know if I trust the Rock in any movie, Joe. I really don't. The whole reason he came back to wrestling is because he because the whole reason he came back to wrestling is because Jungle Cruise, Red Notice, Black Adam, like all did really well. Like that's why <laughs> Benny Safdie is directing it. So yeah, see that's who's, <laughs> pro- who's producing and stars. Is it his ex wife? And- is it fucking? That fucking seven bucks bullshit. I, I don't know. I only had seven bucks in my pocket. All right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> Why is it not on his uh, upcoming? All right. All right. All right. All right. But all right. Like, look, it is, I, I'm just very interested to see what they actually do with this. And I hope, it, I hope they make something good and it's interesting and, and people actually enjoy it. And he takes it. For what it is, like a real role, and says, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and try to do some other stuff. And then here's an idea: slim down and do some regular fucking movies, dude. Too, big. <laughs> right. too, too fucking, fucking big. big. That's your biggest problem. You're uh, too fucking big. Now yeah, him and his ex, uh, are, Mark are two of the producers of the movie. There's like seven producers. Uh, it's him, Danny Garcia, Hiram Garcia. Is that her brother? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her brother. Okay. Yeah, they get that is agent. <laughs> uh, Eli Bush, mm-hmm. Bo Flynn. Is that his agent? Who's a, who's Ooh. his agent? Uh, Hiram. That's, um, that's that's his ex-wife. His ex-wife is his agent. No, Danny is. Oh, she's still his agent. I thought she was. Huh. I thought it was thought Brian Gewertz. No, oh, I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're anyway. they're producing. They're producing. So, yeah. See, more that's. More. Uh, <laughs> and I get it, right? I get it. Like, like they are, they have to be a part of it. I get it, right? Like, because he they don't. is, they don't. He is, he is they he's, don't. A, but he's a brand. He's a business. He's a brand. Like his whole, his whole thing. He's a brand, right? And and I get it. But at the same time, right? Like, let's let's hope that this movie, like you said, is the thing that kind of turns him around. I, his best role is uh is Spencer Strathmore Strathmore and Ballas. It is. Ballas was really good, yo. It was it was he felt the most natural. Oh, he definitely uh, felt could, the most natural. He by far. He right, he he you know, he wasn't trying to like, you know, be a badass, you know, kicking ass and taking ass and ass, right? Like he was he was really good in Ballas and 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 painting game. 
Whereas, whereas the, the subject of this story, um, uh, Dave Batista is good in pretty much everything he's, he's been in recently. I won't say everything, right? Cause he's got some, he's got some weird shit on here too. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Um, you know, what, why army of the dead, bro? Mm-hmm. Like that's a paycheck. I mean, yeah, this was Amazon. It's Netflix, the paycheck, whatever. I guess. I, I really guess. want this Smashing Machine movie to be good. And the thing is, this is the type of movie. It's an A24 movie. I don't know if his core audience is going to go out to see an A24 movie. You now, know? Here's, the, here's the thing. And then he'll never do another one ever again. <laughs> now, but here's the thing. People's reception to the Iron Claw, that was pretty high. People really liked it. Wrestling fans really liked it, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, it's an A24 film. Like, I think if you get yeah, his sort that's of why promotion, he chose it. Oh, 100, 1,000%. 1, <laughs> 1, 1,000%. He was like, they doing wrestling over there? Oh, shit. But I, th- I think the other aspect is if you put their quality of movie making, especially Ben Safdie's quality of movie making, and if he lets him really make the movie and lets him be a vulnerable character in this movie and all that other shit, if you do that, and then you put his fucking super duper douchey fucking promotion behind it, it could it could do quite well. Um, it might be A24's biggest movie, right? Because he's gonna fucking put the smashing machine flavor of Zoa <laughs> energy drinks out that week or whatever, and and all the other nonsense. But if you use his sort of promotion ability, yeah, he could push it. So you never know. I, I, I'm. I'm very curious as to what this movie is going to be. I'm just very curious because I don't know anything about about Mark Kerr as a like career wise. Like, does he have a downfall? Like, what is what's the arc? Is this guy just a big dude who just knock niggas out, and then that's the arc? Because that's not a great arc. Um, <laughs> but there's got there's got to be something there. So there was a documentary about him called The Smashing Machine. Um, yeah. In 2002, um, on HBO, I'm going to see if I can find it on on Max because I'd like to watch it and and see like is there is there something about this guy that's actually like kind of special or interesting? So we'll see. Um, we'll see, we'll see, and um, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Ben Safdie is like just kind of drops out. It's like, you know God what? damn. <laughs> I want to do it. I want to do it. This motherfucker's pissing in bottles, right? By the way, I have something to say about that. I have something to say about that. He's drinking that? that piss. He's drinking that piss, guys. He's drinking it. Nigga, what the fuck? He's drink- Yo, look. He's drinking piss. I'm just telling you. What? I'm, I'm, <laughs> look, look. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying it to be an asshole. I know. That seems I don't like know, thing. man. You're doing Why a really good saying job. It, it seems. Just, just listen. It seems like a thing I would say to be an asshole about The Rock. But hear me out. Bodybuilders and a lot of like MMA type fucking guys, they drink, they are convinced that drinking their own urine is a way of getting more protein as it's been gone. Like it's a way to like basically double the amount of protein. It's disgusting. And my thing is you're at a private gym. You have time to go to the bathroom while you're peeing in a Voss bottle, a glass Voss bottle. He's drinking that pee, guys. He's drinking it. I'm telling you. He's drinking it. <laughs> I'm telling you. The fuck? I'm, I'm telling you. So how do you go from, hey, this nigga's pissing in the bottle, so he's drinking it? That's a, I mean, look. <laughs> they do. They do. I hear, I hear your logic, but I can't possibly. There's no way in hell. Like, I'm if this nigga's saying. drinking his own piss, I'm never watching another fucking rock. That's why he's not going to say he's doing it, guys. <laughs> like, I'm, nah, I can't do I can't abide by that shenanigans. That's disgusting. <laughs> You're the filthy animal. Like, what's wrong with you? Uh, look, I'm just saying. Really? They do. They do it. That's fu- oh It's fucking God. gross. It, it's, it's gross. Machida in uh, UFC, quote, I drink my urine every morning. Yep. My father does that for a long time and and brings it to us. Uh, people think it's a joke. I never said it in the United States because I know how fans will react. I drink my urine every morning like a um, neutral medicine. I'm telling you, they do. They do. 
Do they drink water at least to dilute it? I'm just saying. Please. Brock Lesnar talks just- about drinking uh, drinking urine. Interesting. Hmm. Brock Lesnar. Lesnar also talked about the new trend fighter drinking their own urine and gave some advice. Mm-hmm. They drink their own urine, guys. Like, they drink their own do urine. it? <laughs> like, is that the advice? Yo, it doesn't do any. Yo, it's, okay, all right. <laughs> you don't know that it's until that you try you, it. It's your body it was like, we got to get rid of this. So you yeah, gotta and, and you were like, time for another pass. <laughs> it was a double filtered? Like, what the fuck are we talking about right now? This is, you know what? Move on, please, because this is making me sick to my stomach. Yeah, I don't this, is the, this is uh, <laughs> this is the. Let this be the end of our of our biweekly let's shit on the rock segment here on your podcast. <laughs> we, we we talk about that nigga way too much, and now I don't want to talk about him ever again. Because <laughs> now I believe you. Now I believe you. <laughs> you every time me. every time you see a video of him, it's just sitting in the back. You're going no, and you'll be like. Mm. Why is the bottle just a little bit lower than it was last time? Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you. That's why he wants a private drink. Oh, my God. Uh, he's drinking his own pee, guys. Um, <laughs> Edgar Wright Jesus in talks to direct Sydney Sweeney's Barbarella. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think I care about the Barbarella. Sydney Sweeney? Uh-huh. I'm assuming uh, she's Barbarella. I mean, she's yeah, got the... When- um, she got the tits for it. Like, okay, let's be there honest. you go. All right, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Look, we all know what the fuck she looks like. Come on now. I'm not being misogynist. Like, that movie was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah she Immersive. was on Saturday Night Live. She was on Saturday Night Live talking about her breast and bouncing up and down. You know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> she knows what she looks like, yo. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Uh, God bless <laughs> God bless. Look, um, okay. this is fine. I don't, I, I don't think I care about Barbarella at all. A mercenary who travels right, the yeah. universe, um, obviously portrayed by Jane Fonda in the 1968 movie. Um, didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't what's her name play her also? Or was that Stripperella? Are you thinking uh, Pamela uh, Anderson? No, that's Barbara Wire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, barbed wire! It's all the same, guys. Close, not bad. <laughs> who is who is in fact a stripper? That was that was uh, that was her alter ego or whatever. That was a movie. It wasn't was it wasn't barbed wire a Stan Lee creation? I want to say that's correct. Yes. Hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, look, maybe. Uh, all right. Look, it's all it's all the same. They're all the same. Blonde white women with uh, big boobs and uh, killing aliens or some shit. Like, it seems very, you know, I, I don't know, man. It's like, I'll like watch it. By the way, I, not, it. Um, no, Barbed Wire was not created by Stanley. Created by uh, Chris Warner. A perfect. Okay. Then Stripperella was, was created by Stanley. Hmm. Pervert. Um, yeah. So okay, that's fine. Look, the only thing I'll say about this is Edgar Wright is a very good director. I like him a lot. Uh, if you've not seen Last Night in Soho, which was his uh, last film, you should see that. That was very, very, very good. Um, a lot of people did not see it. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, and obviously, Baby Driver was great, and Scott Pilgrim versus the World was great, um, amongst many, many other things. But yeah, Last Night in Soho was was a cool movie. Um, last but certainly not least in topics, um, Comcast, Peacock, or excuse me, Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV, uh, not to be outdone by the other uh, streaming um, studios, is going to have a bundle under Comcast that is, quote, um, at a vastly reduced price. Um, so if you don't have Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV, <laughs> For cheap, um, yeah. Is it is it Netflix alone like twenty bucks if you want like four K? Yeah, something like that. Some crazy shit like that. Okay, something like that. Yeah, I'm need all that. The cheapest way to get all three streamers separately today is an ad supported Peacock Premium at five ninety nine a month. Netflix Basic with ads six ninety nine a month, and standard Apple TV at nine ninety nine. Note that. 
to get a custom comcast streamer saver discount you will need to already subscribe to xfinity blah 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 so um oh, you have to be an xfinity customer yeah to cool. get their 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 stream saver discount but that that's a separate comcast thing um what do you think the cost is going to be for for all three of these together 20 bucks are we talking about like the basic the basic fucking uh with all the ads and shit no i'm thinking one without the ads Without ads, with all the ads, it's not going to be twenty dollars. It's not. Yeah, it's going to be thirty bucks. They said reduce Peacock, price. Peacock Netflix itself alone no is ads. fucking fifteen. <laughs> right, and Peacock by ten. itself with no ads is ten. This is going to be twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, I don't price. think that's 10, bad. Ten bucks a piece. I don't think thirty bucks is bad. No, that's actually a very good reduced price, but like, yeah, I'm not mad for two streaming thirty bucks for another bundle. For, for two streaming services that you want and Peacock, sure. No, but that's how I'm going to watch uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes. I need it. <laughs> they have all the good. They have all the good movies there. Um, so right. okay. So right now, <clears throat> internet is what? Well, the internet is like you can get really good internet for forty bucks, fifty bucks, forty, forty, fifty bucks, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the one bundle that is probably going to be thirty bucks, which the HBO Max and whatever the fuck else the other two, and then this bundle that's six HBO, services: HBO Max, Hulu, and Disney Plus. Yeah. Okay, Hulu is really good. Disney Plus, hit or miss. HBO Max, a lot of misses. <laughs> a lot of misses. This one is going to be Netflix. A lot of trash. Every every three months you get something really good. Uh, Peacock has wrestling. And what's the other one? <laughs> what's Apple the third TV. one? Apple TV, Apple TV is, is really good. Apple, yeah, TV, Apple TV is really is great. Good. Yeah. So say sixty bucks plus like forty, fifty bucks is one hundred and ten dollars. What other streaming services are worthwhile? Nothing. Nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. So you spend like a hundred something bucks a month. How much is cable, Mike? That you still have there? Uh, hold on. Let me pull up my bill. <laughs> It's, it's like two hundred. Yeah, it's like two twenty. And you pay for two twenty for. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that includes, that includes the, the internet? internet. That includes the okay. internet wrapped in. Oh, okay. Yeah, that includes the you internet. Yeah, like phone in. too. Yeah, phone also. Nigga, do y'all oh, think yeah. I'm paying two hundred dollars for only cable? <laughs> like. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> cable is no. really expensive. Like three hundred channels, right? Like no, that includes that includes the he gets all the that food includes networks. the actual internet access. Okay, oh, so it's a double. So it's a double play. You got the internet and the cable. Yeah. Oh, you can get the triple play. Yeah. You can get the phone. You probably had the probably phone, cheaper, like, if you get the triple play. play, and you ain't going to use the phone, but like it's probably cheaper to just have it. Uh, so yeah, this is probably this. This is actually pretty good, honestly. When you think about how much you pay for, you pay for your internet, and if you're bundling up all of these these uh, streaming services, oh, I do have phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Ain't made a ain't made a single goddamn phone call on that line. And the fucked up thing about fucking cable <laughs> is. You, you, like if you first sign up, they give it to you for like a year for like a hundred and fifty bucks, mm-hmm. and then if you if you leave and then you go to a new house, they still don't give you like the new because you've been a customer already. It's real fucked up. They treat the new customers like royalty, and then they be like, "Go fuck yourself." Once you be like your customer forever, it's really fucked up. Yep. But no, this uh, actually would probably this, honestly, I think this is good if they're just gonna bundle them to make them slightly cheaper. I mean, if you if you have, I mean, I have all of these services. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have all six of them, um, which is fucking ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and I I deeply regret saying that out loud. Frankly, um, I feel like I should have two. Like if I, if I'm being honest, I should probably have like two of them. It should be like Apple TV and Hulu. And well, now fuck Apple TV and Disney, because then like Hulu's like included at this point. Yeah, 
Yeah, because Hulu, Disney, and ESPN are a bundle, right? Already. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how is that going to work? Like, they've got – this is starting to, like, have nested bundles and all this other shit. Like, this is <laughs> this is getting silly. Why don't they just – why don't they just have, a, a like, a thing where you can sign up and you get, like, 300 channels and it's, like, $250 a month and just be done with it? <laughs> like, <laughs> just do something like that. <laughs> Go to all these different – How many channels do you watch? Like, how many channels do you – Because I, I know – I don't watch TV, yo. I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. So she, wild, watches she watches how TV. She watches how many channels? She watches okay. TV. Watch. BET. She watches BET because black. Uh, she watches Food Network. BET. Clio. The uh, fuck is Clio? TV One. What the fuck is that? Exactly. Exactly. It's a black. It's a black channel. They create new ones. New black channels. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it real quick. Clio. They, yeah, they have. They have. They have a channel? bunch of fucking nonsense. There's like, there's like eight different Nickelodeon channels and shit. Um, no, that we that we let Maxwell watch on the weekends. What else? Turn down. They've been turned down. Cleo, Jesus Christ! Christ. Turn down. Turn heard. down. That's crazy. Uh, what else do we have? Hold on, let me find out. We got we got a bunch of TNT. That's what I watch. I watch I watch basketball on TNT uh, and ESPN. Um. HGTV, right? And well, oh, you're married. Channel. You're that's a part of your marriage contract. I mean, it, I look. I it never is. watched it before. I yeah. never watched it from before, and I've been watching it for the past eight some odd years. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's exactly what I, that I was. Is. So happy yeah. to see all the HGTV shows were on like HBO Max. I was like, yes, we're back. Of course, <laughs> there are four different Nickelodeon channels, nigga. Four. There are four different Nickelodeon channels. There's Aspire, which is playing My Wife and Kids right now, uh, followed by the Steve Harvey Show. Oh, this is another uh, Negro channel. Yes, it's a black channel. There's TV <laughs> One, which is playing a which is playing a block of Living Single right now. There's BET, which is playing Tyler Perry's Family Reunion. There's Cleo, which is playing E, a block of Eve. Remember Eve, the rapper, had a television show. Oh, uh, she married dude. a white man, though she could act. There's uh, yeah, HBCU, a there's yeah. HBCU Go Sports. Uh, they, they put are, HBCU Sports on TV. Yeah. Wow. TV. Has there's changed. the Grio. The Grio has a channel, right? The Grio has a channel. <laughs> yes. Like and there's wow. Okay, these are things I did not know. And they're, they are playing a block of The Cosby Show and uh, followed by Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you ever need to. <laughs> if you need to find a crackhead. <laughs> All right, this and is then ridiculous. there's Stellar. So, yeah, there's a bunch there's, of black. I'm sorry. What's, what's the last one? Stellar, which, which is playing the sixth annual Black Music Honors right now. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of black channels that she watches, and she watches literally every streaming uh, service. She will cycle through them all to find some. And, and, you've, look, never th- and you've never something? thought about finding these bullshit ass channels on like Hulu so that you can cancel cable. I don't need to cancel cable. <laughs> you think you think Hulu is you think Hulu is going to have Aspire, Jay? I don't know. What what's one exactly. of their what's one of their original programs? Oh, I don't know about all that now. I, I told you <laughs> I don't watch this shit. She does. Um, Hustle, Sizzle, but, and Smoke is one of them with uh, Chef G Garvin. I actually used to watch this show on like BET or some shit like that. Uh, Twisted Dish, another Negro. Uh, yeah, it's all black black folks. That's good. Yeah. My wife and kids. All black people. Oh, black. People. Sorry for supporting black people, guys. Sorry. Yeah, you paying too much. <laughs> you know she won't. She she asked me. She asked me, "Do we have BritBox?" Because like, there's a bunch of British shows that she wants to watch. And I'm like, I can't. I can't. You know, I can't. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Get that one of them gotta go. And she was like, "All right, well, we don't need it now, I guess." Yeah. See how? See yeah. see that work. We don't need it now, I guess. Don't worry. I'll get it. I'll get that Brit box. <laughs> Brit box. Oh, my God. 
Um, all right, next up. Uh, actually, let's take a quick break and then we're going to get into what the fuck stories. All right, what the fuck brought to you by JTD from the Edit That Out podcast. Micah, take it away. A woman was caught trying to smuggle insects into a country. Uh, she arrived at the country's third busiest airport at an unspecified date and was filmed struggling to lift her suitcase onto the luggage scanner, but the x-ray machine picked up several anomalies inside her bag. Uh, let's see. Upon inspection, customs officers found hundreds of individually wrapped beetles inside, some still alive and crawling in her bag. Mm. She had time. She had tried to hide them under packets of snacks. Um, yeah. the insects are considered an exotic species in this location. Officers counted 11 species of beetle, including the Japanese stag beetle, uh, the Atlas rhinoceros beetle, the <laughs> Goliathus orientalis, which sounds like the most racist Harry Potter spell. <laughs> 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 I just I had just the name of that shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, all the beetles are considered alien to this country. Uh, none of the beetles live in the country naturally, so they are considered an exotic species. Australia? Uh, 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 no, no, no. That that that's that's the source of all the exotic monsters. Uh, people would get people wouldn't uh, be getting in trouble for bringing something into Australia. I thought they were trying Probably to breed trouble, new monsters, taking them out. Uh, Florida. <laughs> Not quite close. China. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, China uh, I was going to say China, but that whole like oriental beetle shit was a little offensive. So I wanted to <laughs> 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 whatever the fuck that thing was called. I'm like, you know, Galathus orientalis. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild ass <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> they found it in like China, in the Orient, and they were like, "Oh, Orientalis, let's keep it." That's what happened with that name. I yeah. guarantee it. I mean, it's a pretty dope looking beetle, though. I got to tell you, it's black and white, and it's got wings under it and shit. Like, oh, all right, this shit looks kind of dope, man. Cool. Yeah, stop smuggling bugs, you weirdos. Um, all right, Terrence, you're up. Um, this. All right. Our woman claims she hasn't eaten or drunk anything in over 16 years. Huh. She's lying. Muluork Ambal, okay. Ambal, uh, a 26 year old woman from this place, claims to have gone with the last 16 years of her life without eating or drinking anything. Okay. Most people can hardly last a few hours without munching on something, but this woman uh, insists that she sh she shunned food forever one day when she was only 10 years old. After her appetite vanished out of the blue, apart from her complete lack of sustenance, this woman reportedly has a normal life. She is in good health and has plenty of energy to perform her I daily don't believe you. life. Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah, that's not how, that's not not how humans often. work. Not unless her body, like, there are some, like, superhuman people in this world, but, like, I can't imagine you don't eat anything yeah, at all. Eat very little. Sure. This woman is gorging on no food, food the second the lights or are out. water. <laughs> right. No food or water. At l you need at least something to drink. Yeah, you would die. All right. You would die. Uh, the woman claims that because she hasn't consumed any food or water in 16 years, she is. She also hasn't had to use a toilet during the time. Apparently, the only time she needs to use the bathroom is when she bathes. <laughs> where she shits her pants while she bathes. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, in 2021, um, Ethiopia. Uh, well, I just gave it away. Um, oh, well, we'll okay. There it is. I was going to say this got Africa written all over it. I'm just trying to find out. <laughs> I was going, I was going Nigeria for this one, but okay. Uh, <laughs> it's Ethiopian. Uh, in 2021, Ethiopian news blog Borkena announced that the country's prime minister had learned of her claims and had arranged to have her tested by doctors in Dubai in her, in her recent interview with Drew Binsky, the 26 year old claimed that doctors found nothing wrong with her. Although she didn't mention, she didn't mention that they kept her under observation to see if she could really survive without food and water. So she didn't mention if they kept her there. 
did they? Yeah. I, I I'm not buying this. I know it's a it's yeah. a weird it's this is a weird uh, stance to take, but I don't think if you don't eat or drink that you'll live. So <laughs> right for sixteen. Yeah, what's how long can you go? How long do they say you can go without water? It's like three days. Couple of days? Yeah, three or four days until you fucking yeah, start dehydrating. You can go a while. You can go a long time without food, but you need, yeah, you need water, water yeah. because your body is, prizes a lot of fucking water. You'll dry out. Well, I don't understand why people uh, lie like this. <laughs> I, don't yeah. I don't understand it. Like, what is the purpose? I don't drink yeah. water in 16 years. Yes, you do. Yeah, you, you do. Like, you do. You sound, you, you sound like you have the amount of empathy that my wife had after episode five of Baby Reindeer. Yeah. It's like, I don't understand why you're doing this. Yeah. You brought this on yourself. Like, you brought this on yourself. Get the fuck out of here. I felt sorry for her. I, why? Why? Still? Still? You deserve it. She says she likes to... I went to another article. She says she likes to cook for her family, uh, but she doesn't eat anything. You're a liar. Yo, you don't sneak... You don't sneak I get the fuck bit? out of here. You don't you sneak a, like a, a, a portion of Jollof whatever the fuck African... Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. You're lying. And you take a sip of water when everybody sleep at night. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she's like, God damn, I'm thirsty in the motherfucker. She, she don't, don't even, don't she don't even, out. she don't even piss in order to drink it. Yeah. Like you're she never gonna, piss. you're never gonna build muscle without without drinking your own urine. Look, it's the only way, really. It's not that he does steroids; <laughs> it's that he's drinking his own piss. That's the. Is that he did steroids once and he's recycling them <laughs> through his piss? He's saving money, really. It's 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 a cost savings. It's um, how the rich stay rich, man. It's how the rich stay rich. Yes, rich people drink their own. Y'all over here literally <laughs> pissing your money away <laughs> when you should be drinking it. Ugh. I can't believe the how can anybody this. how can anybody buy something with his face on it, knowing that like <laughs> this is a bald guy. <laughs> There's a ball guy selling shampoo and a, a piss drinking guy <laughs> right. selling like, energy fuck? drink. Like, what the fuck? I like ain't had hair in 23 years. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. I, I will. Selling I will never. Shampoo. I will never forget that clip. It was like a British, like like his British teenager showing his mom. He's like, "Look, mom, the Rock has shampoo." He's like, "He's fucking bald. What does he know about shampoo?" She was like, "So pissed." <laughs> but in fairness, it's a good point. What does he know? Um. No, he's drinking piss, guys. Like it's just, it is what it is. Um, I mean, they did. They did. I'm looking at another article. They did actually test her. They said that there was no food, water, or waste products in her digestive uh, digestive tract. Cool, cool. Okay. Here, here's the thing. She, uh, keep her, keep her there for one week under 24 hour yeah. observation. Let's see if she can live through through a week. I guarantee you, by day three. I don't feel so good. Oh, maybe it's because you're fucking starving, you dumbass. Here, have a Twix. Like, shut up. I think. Um, I think the. I think we are. I look. I believe her, and I think we are missing uh, the most obvious thing uh, about this woman is that she's a blue alien. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> she might be an alien if she's maybe. able to pull this shit off. Maybe. Uh, why don't you want to eat? That's my problem. What the fuck. You, you don't want to eat nothing? You're just not that hungry? You're like, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat. How long have you not eaten? 16 years. Okay. All right. I don't believe Her you. skin looks that good. Her face isn't sunken in. But you don't... Yeah, she looks... She's actually a pretty gal, too. Like, she's not... Yeah. She's, a, she's an attractive woman. And she no. doesn't look like a skeleton, which is very strange. Yeah, it's almost as if she's hey. fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Look, man, I don't know. She's probably I, married to one of those pastors that throws motor oil in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Some other bullshit artist. Oh, uh, okay. Knock it off, lady. You definitely. Yeah, somebody in the comments says lock her up for a week and see what happens. <laughs> see? Yeah, this exactly. person, this person's of sound, sound mind. Um, you know, why don't they send her over to this place? A uh, food restaurant, um, which is what all restaurants are. Um... <laughs> Uh, in, in this country recently attracted criticism online for serving bizarre looking dish consisting of raw octopus egg sac. Cool. 
Japan. Japan. Uh, it's a Japanese. It's a Japanese food restaurant, but it is not located in Japan. Um, known as uh, China. Uh, <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> um, known as Taku Tamago, um, the strange dish that landed Singapore. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is disgusting. No thanks. Raw octopus egg with a bunch of fucking eggs that flew out of it. You're not eating that. No. Don't you? Uh, no. Don't you like? Uh, nah, I don't, you don't, you don't, I don't like, like gelatinous foods. I don't like gelatinous foods. Yeah. No. No. This, this reminds me of the scene in uh, the Superior Indiana Jones movie Temple of Doom where they put the snake. On the on the plate and they oh, cut it ew. open. Ew, and nah, the that's out of it. disgusting. Yeah. Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. This is nope. this is how my my she wife this is how my wife's arachnophobia started. She uh, there was a, a, a an egg sack of uh, spiders, and oh. while her mother was trying to clean it up, the thing burst, and then a bunch of little burst. spiders came out. Oh fuck that! that no, was she's it. justified. Yo. <laughs> that was it. I get it. I, I get it now. <laughs> and she was like, and she was like, you know, she was like in single digits in terms of age. And oh like, no, that, that that's it. imprinted on her mind forever. <laughs> You're know? like, no, absolutely not. I don't think I could see that now, and I'm 44 years old. I'd freak the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> like eight years. Yeah, I understand old. now. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, I didn't even need to hear that story. That's disgusting, Micah. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, no, I'm it's not eating disgusting. this. Disgusting. Yeah, no, this. It's just the look and the way they just ripped a sack. No. No. Mm-mm. Raw octopus <clears throat> eggs are apparently a common delicacy in Japan, particularly in the region of I ain't going there and no thank you, uh, where they're available <laughs> all year round. Um, now, I think if it was presented with the raw like eggs outside of that sack, maybe. But if you cut it open and it runs onto that plate, no fucking thank you, yo. Like. Yeah, that presentation. I mean, the presentation, presentation is everything. Right? Like, <laughs> presentation is everything. And if they bring a sack and then they cut it open and it just falls all up to the plate in front of you, I'm gonna throw up. Yeah, I'm gonna like, throw up right on them fucking octopus eggs. Like, nah. I hope this wasn't expensive because I'm not paying for it. <laughs> no. Yes. New trend in seafood. Yeah, you can keep it. Fuck out of here. Um, all right, trailers this week. Um. First one up is Cross. This is the Alex Cross series on Amazon, um, starring uh, Ald- uh, Aldich Hodge or Aldis Hodge. Um, I wasn't expecting this from this trailer. It it it's a fine trailer. I just wasn't expecting it. I thought it was going to be maybe a little bit darker, um, like the movies. Also, I wasn't expecting to see that dude without a shirt on, but, you know, God bless. Um, I don't know why they didn't choose that scene from Morgan Freeman. Seems strange to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, look, I'm uh, my interest is uh, consider it peaked. Uh, I'll check it out. Yeah. It's Amazon. I'll check it out. I mean, I'm going to have to check it out. But uh, so even if I didn't want to check it out, uh, I would have to check it out. But, look, I like a... I like a good crime uh, story. Yeah, I like uh, I like black people, you know, interrogating white people for a change. Like, yeah, and it's 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 already got a second season. So yeah, and we don't even know have faith. the first season is even coming out. <laughs> it's right. no fucking, yeah, there's no fucking date. That's kind of weird. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's the next one? Uh, next up, Boneyard. This is um, a movie starring Curtis Fifty Cent Jackson um, acting. Okay, hmm. with Mel Gibson. Well, it's not his first time. I know he's on power. <laughs> I, I get that. This just feels like it feels like a very different thing for him to like be playing a lead cop. It's just kind of interesting role for him. I mean, to play a yeah, cop. Yeah. Huh? What was that movie where he got real thin? Nobody saw it. Yeah, nobody saw it, so he did all that for nothing. Um, yeah, the movie was like a football player. And I think he got cancer mm-hmm. or something like that. 
Hey, he's, the, he's the complete opposite of that character in this movie. Um, yeah. oh. So you put on a little bit of weight. <laughs> he got a little fat, cool. uh, yeah. You got a case. You got a case of the Martin Lawrence going. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Uh, like, you gotta, I know this. You got a story. You got a fat face. You got to let that beard grow out, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you can't can't have a you can't have a goatee with 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 fat face, man. It's not it's not a good look. Uh, I've you been look like I've, you took one big hit from Tommy Hearns. You know? like, just, <laughs> <laughs> It looks like those fucking pictures of me a couple of months ago. Fucked up. Oh man. It's not, it's nothing I mean, worse than finding out you had a fat head and you didn't know back then. It's terrible. <laughs> is this, is, so is this going to be just all like direct to streaming? I can't imagine this coming out in theaters. All right. Uh, oh, it, oh, it is July fifth. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I, oh, can I it's coming up. It's coming out to VOD first, and then to theaters on the fifth. What the fuck? Mm, that's not that seems like an odd choice. Mm, not when the movie starring Mel Gibson. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, yeah. I, I give people a lot of credit. People really holding to this fuck Mel Gibson shit. Like they really don't fuck with him. You know? <laughs> like this might be one I'm of the surprised. greatest boycotts of all time. I'm I'm very surprised. I mean, because he offended everybody, right? Yeah, he kind of like, everybody off. You know, you can't make fun of Jews and black people like in the same recording. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, you gotta like, have you gotta one group those. on your side. You gotta, you gotta space that out, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta do one. You gotta be anti-Semitic and then get forgiveness, then be racist, and then try to get forgiveness. You can't just be like, <laughs> "Are you a Jew?" I hope you get fucked by a pack of niggers. Like, what the fuck? Like, yo, that's two for one, yo. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't do that, yo. You being greedy, all right? You being greedy. You got to space that shit out. Everything in moderation, including racism and bigotry. Of course, obviously, people listen to this shit yeah. right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, it's. I actually don't think the trailer looks bad. Like, it doesn't look like a necessarily bad movie to me. Um. I don't. I don't think it's the highest of quality. Um, that is clear, but story and everything looks like looks pretty decent. Yeah, it looks fine. I actually know the story. I've, I've this is the bone collector story, crime. right? Yeah, a true crime person. So I, I, I remember that story. Of course you do. Creepy. A little weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it though. I, I like that. Feels like that feels like something I would watch on a Saturday. Um. It's right. weird to see fit in it. That's all my that's the only thing that I'm just like. What? It it right. Okay. Like he doesn't feel normal in movies like that. But look, if he's branching out, I, like I'm I'm here to support that. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um all right, the trailer for Megalopolis. This is Francis Ford Coppola's um passion project. Like he has been working on this movie quite literally since 1983, like trying to get it off the ground. Um I'll give the 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 premise here because the trailer doesn't really tell you much. Um, the premise is an accident destroys a decaying metropolis called New Rome. Caesar Caesar Catalina, a idealist architect with the power to control time, aims to rebuild it as a sustainable utopia, while his opposition, a corrupt mayor Franklin Cicero, remains committed to a regressive status quo. Torn between them and Franklin's socialite daughter Julia, who's who tired of the influence she inherited searches for her life's meaning. So, okay. I don't know what any of that means in real time. Um, <laughs> it looks I, really fucking, <laughs> that's it looks I beautiful. That's like it looks beautiful. Yeah. That's what I got from this trailer. Look, it's Coppola like a is a, just... Coppola is a great director. Um, it'd be interesting to see what a movie looks like that he's had in his mind almost my entire life and like is finally able to do it. Like what is, is he too close to the material now or does he, you know, has he thought about it so much that he, he ends up making something that's just like one for the ages. I don't know. So we'll see. I mean, Adam driver, um, is a great, great actor. I mean, a, cast. It, it really does. So 
Um, Adam Driver, Giancarlo Esposito, Natalie Emanuel, Arby Plaza, Shia LaBeouf, John Voight, Jason Schwartzman. God damn. Lawrence Fishburne, Catherine Hunter, Dustin Hoffman. Okay. I, uh, hopefully it's good. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more of the trailer or whatever. I'm I'm not going to say I'm like rush out to see it uh, necessarily, but it does look quite beautiful. I, I will say that it's got some it's got some pretty uh, amazing looking scenes. Michael, what are your thoughts on this? I I think it looks interesting. I think it looks good. Uh, I also think this movie has the potential to be a disaster. <laughs> One thousand um, percent. You know and. Uh, like I'm a very tenant. curious. Yeah. Like, like tenant? I'm, is that I'm, what you said? I'm, yeah. I'm I'm very curious to see what people think about this movie before I invest my time into it. Um like this is a movie that I feel like I gotta see in theaters. Yeah. But I'm not going to if uh this also seems like a real fucking long movie. Seven um minutes. so I'm not gonna uh I'm not going to rush out in the theater to see it if it doesn't get like universal acclaim. Yeah, we'll see. I, I'm I'm very interested in it, but I don't know what the fuck is going on. I will happily <laughs> admit that I really don't. I mean, it's uh, I don't know. It seems like it seems like another movie. It seems like a cyberpunk movie, right? Where there's the, in the tropes of cyberpunk are like. A a, a a a protagonist that is essentially on the left fighting giant corporations that are effectively on the right and the and that's kind of what this is right like adam driver is a is an idealist right mm-hmm. and he's going up against a crooked politician who he remains committed to the regressive status quo, perpetuating greed and special interests and partisan. What, like, I get it. I kind of get what this is going to be. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the execution and how the story is going to be told. All right. Well, here, here, here's a. Uh... Uh, Cam's comment on the trailer: The buzz out of CinemaCon is that it was an absolute train wreck. So what? I, what the fuck? I tell you, yo. <laughs> what did I tell you? What did I tell you, yo? That, like, but that, that was my point. Is he too close to the material? Like you've been thinking about it since 1983. Like you could get lost in the weeds of of what your idea was because you're like it's got to be perfect. And then you're just, it, before when you pull your head up, it's like what the fuck did you make? Like this is <laughs> so. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, it could be an absolute disaster. So we'll see. I mean, the buzz of CinemaCon isn't always 100% correct. It's like 98% correct. So, <laughs> yeah, because they're just happy to see all of these fucking things. And they usually give shit a lot of praise. So what they say is a train wreck. That's, that's really not a good sign. No. Okay? Coming out of any festival. Yeah. Now, CinemaCon is sign. for sort of industry insiders, right? Like, it's the it's the one it's it's like five six hundred dollars to get in it's this is like the big time reviewers kind of go and spend their their big money um per ticket to see these like exclusive films and stuff like that i'd love to go but yeah if i'm paying five hundred dollars or whatever it is and i see a movie and it's not good i'm gonna tell you it's not good (laughs) so absolute train wreck well there you go michael you called it (laughs) <laughs> he fucking nailed it. I mean, look, we, we'll see. I, you know, we'll like you said, we'll wait till a little more consensus comes out. But uh, last movie I saw that had a bunch of people I liked in it was uh, Unfrosted. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Was that not? That He's been in a bit of hot water. Hadn't he? Yeah. Didn't they walk out of yeah. I don't think they walked out for anything he said at the actual uh, commencement speech. I think it's because he's like pro Israel. Yeah, this is yeah, a fucking seventy year old Jew. What the fuck do you expect? Yeah, right. right. Like, what do you expect? He's seventy. Like, my cousins are there. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> right. He's just old enough to run for president. 
<laughs> right. Barely. We just Barely. hit that three. Right. It's ridiculous. Amazing. Anyway. All right. That is it for us for this week. We will see you guys next time. Uh, no thank X-Men you. talk because we are recording this a day before X-Men I, comes out. Thank you. So. I, meant to, I meant to say that right. earlier in the episode. People are like, what the fuck happened? Yes, we're coming out of the <laughs> um, So, yeah, we will uh, we'll talk about X-Men's finale next week. Later, guys. See you. Bye. <clears throat>